hear from someone who teaches social innovation and entrepreneurship at Mount Royal University and develops exhibits for museums and science centers. She is passionate about punctuation and valiant failures. Maybe she'll be able to shed some light on the Intero Bank quest mark. Give a warm welcome to Catherine Ziff. that we've had tonight, but I have to say that when I was asked if I would be perhaps willing to participate in tonight, and I was, I could talk about anything that I could relate to the Intero Bang at all, I wanted to talk about punctuation. <laughs> because I love punctuation, I love the power that punctuation gives us. But I also know that this may not be your experience of punctuation. I want to convince you it's more than a way for your English teacher to torture you. It's more than a way we get to make fun of people who use it wrong. <laughs> in fact, in fact, punctuation is your friend. It's your friend who knows when you've, you've lost the person that you're talking to. It's your friend who can step in and say, what they were trying to say was. And as you can see, early written languages needed this help. <laughs> that words were written, run together, no spaces. That is how we talk. I'm not pronouncing each word individually. But it's this painful puzzle for readers to try to figure out. It's not good. And so, I do notice that even as modern communication devices have made all of this easier, URLs have brought back this problem. Just think about the poor people registering their website for Penn Island. <laughs> so, we need help. Written language needs more. We need the expressiveness that you see in body language or hear in voice or see on someone's face. Um, you know, when it's written down, words don't say everything that we need. Like, I love you, I hate you. You know, those are just three letters apart. But if they're whispered in your ear or yelled at you across the table, they mean something completely different. So, how can we get written language closer to spoken language? We use punctuation. Fans of the West Wing may remember, <laughs> yes, that there are 14 kinds of punctuation in modern English. Yeah, Toby. Yeah. Bartlett and Toby couldn't be wrong. Um, this is where I'm really going to need my notes. We've got the period, comma, question mark, exclamation point, two different things, uh, the apostrophe, quotation marks, hyphen, dash, Ellipses, colon, semicolon, parentheses, brackets, and braces. That's just 14 things. That, I'm just saying, that is not enough. <laughs> it's not enough for us to communicate everything that we want to get across. We need more help. And the fact is that in the past, we used to have more help than we do now. English has lost punctuation marks over the years. We used to have the fluoron, <laughs> the asterism, the pilcro. They're lovely, but we lost them. <laughs> and the reason we lost them is because they all serve the same purpose. They're all ways to say a new idea is coming. I'm wrapping up this one idea. Something else is coming. Stop. New idea on the way. <laughs> and for better or worse, they got replaced by something really simple, which is just a carriage return and an indentation to say this is a new paragraph. I love the elegance, but I miss having a page littered with little leaves and stars. I think it would have been lovely. <laughs> and so we've been experimenting. We've been experimenting with other ways to communicate. This is from a German book from the 1860s. <laughs> yeah. Um, and even coming on through the 20th century, there was a, a flourishing of attempts at new kinds of punctuation. Maybe we felt like we needed to be able to express sarcasm, for which we had the sark mark. It's kind of an 
overly elaborate uh, at symbol or the irony mark, which is like, imagine an exclamation point that's been hit by lightning. So you could have used that to signal irony. Um, when we wanted to express that people were talking to each other, like maybe your friend has said something that was a question and you're reporting on it, but you want to say you were certain about it, you could have used the question comma, which is a question mark just about that phrase, or the certainty mark, an exclamation point with an extra bar through it. There are a lot of these things. None of them, none of them made it. <laughs> um, maybe you weren't even expressing a question. You might have used the rhetorical mark, which was a backwards question mark, which is like, I'm asking a question, but I don't really want an answer. <laughs> so, all of these things come together to let us try to do more with printed metal type. We were limited by what our printer, you know, our, our old, what printer used to mean, what they had available, or what our typewriters had available. I used to make a penguin by pressing a one and then backspacing an ampersand over it. You should try it if you have a typewriter, it's cute. <laughs> uh, we did find some other ways to go about it, you know, we, to put together symbols in novel ways to express feelings and not just content. Um, some people got super elaborate with this. I think that this is the peak of this kind of art. It's coming. It's coming. <laughs> I, you know, I, I miss like those probably very snowy days when this seemed like a good way to spend your time. <laughs> and instead, now, of course, the computers do it for us. I don't need to press the one and backspace with an ampersand. Got a cute, you kind of even chubby penguin there ready for me. I guess it's progress. I guess it's the future. I'm still a little sad.